Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and this is the monthly wrap-up for May of 2023. So today I'm just going to be talking about the books that I finished reading in May of 2023. I have talked about all of these books more in depth in previous videos, uh, mostly videos that I call Fresh Red Kills, where I look at video, sorry, look at books that I have recently read and I do, you know, I give a little more in depth of my, my overall thoughts on them. I don't necessarily call them reviews, there's more me giving my, my overall thoughts all of my videos, obviously, I think you could tell, are unscripted. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to go through them fairly quickly um, and let you know my thoughts, and we'll get through it. Um, so here we go. The first book that I read, I finished in uh, May, was this one, uh, The Devil Wins, A History of Lying from the Garden of Eden to the Enlightenment by Dallas Denary II. Uh, from Princeton University Press. Now, I read this for, this actually fit into two different reading events that I'm, that I was doing or am doing. Um, the first one is Historathon. That is a year-long celebration of reading and discussing nonfiction history. Uh, we have split the year up into four quarters, uh, each quarter being three months long, and those quarters looking at different periods of history. The first quarter was prehistory up to 500 CE, and the second quarter, which we are still in the midst of as I record this in June, uh, is looking at 500 to 1500, so essentially the Middle Ages if you're talking about the, Euro uh, the European uh, geographic side of things. And that's largely what this deals with. This looks at late antiquity up to the early modern era, uh, and I am also... I also read this for another booktube event that did not officially happen this year, but uh, some of us decided to still kind of carry the torch and do it anyway because we like it, and that was maybe Midrash, where we look at uh, books about religion. And this looks at how the concepts of lying changed from late antiquity up to the early modern period. Uh, especially, you know, it's split up basically into um, the way that theologians looked at this, and then the way that secular people looked at it. Uh, and it's really, really interesting. It looks at lying um, in the Bible, uh, lying from the perspective of God, of Satan, um, lying in the realm of the court, uh, lying as it was perceived through gender. Uh, so there's lots of different um, aspects that we can look at. Now, it is very much... Um, a look at like this is what this person read, wrote about it this is what this person wrote about it. this is what this person wrote about it so it feels a little bit like it's a, um, a primary source book at times uh, and that will I think determine how much enjoyment you get out of something like this um, if you like reading a lot of theology a lot of theologians and the things that they wrote you'll like the first half probably more than I do. Um, I like that stuff to a point. Uh, I was more interested in the stuff that they talked about at the end with uh, especially women um, like Christine de Pizan and uh, figures like that. Uh, but overall, I found this is really interesting. It wasn't always engaging in a way that I wanted it to be, but uh, absolutely a fascinating topic. Um, and again, it sounds like something you like, I would recommend it. Uh, one of the next things that I had read is this classic, uh, The Witch Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spear, um, originally published in the late 1950s. Now, I uh, teach uh, middle school social studies, and this year I decided to create at my school a, a monthly history book club where we look at history through books, and we choose different types of books and different topics every single month. Uh, we did a month of um, graphic novels, a month of uh, looking at a nonfiction book about the Titanic, A Night to Remember, and then the month of May was looking at historical fiction. So we looked at this, and I'm from Connecticut, and this takes place in Connecticut in the 1600s, uh, about a teenage girl uh, who comes from Barbados to the Connecticut colony uh, to live with her Puritan family, though she is not Puritan, so she has a hard time fitting in. And because she's different, she sticks out. And those who stick out in Puritan societies are susceptible to being uh, accused of being a witch, which was a very, very serious offense. Uh, <laughs> as anybody who knows anything about New England history uh, can attest. Um, of course, Salem is the most uh, famous, uh, you know, witch trials 
in the United States and resulted in 19 people being killed. Uh, but Connecticut did it first, and Connecticut was also killing people. And that included in Wethersfield, Connecticut, where this takes place, this book. Uh, now, I enjoyed this. I thought it was quite good, and my students are actually, they've had a really good time with it as well. They really are engaged by uh, by this by the character of Kit. Um, I think that they did a really good job of, uh, of capturing the time period and not making Puritan society like a monolithic culture. Uh, we see variation even within the Puritan society. Um, and I, I give it credit for that. And I think for younger readers, it, they do a really good job of showing how somebody who doesn't quite fit in can, uh, can leave themselves open to, um, to accusations and suspicion, but also how those things can be overcome through caring and familial ties. So I was glad that I read this. This is something I've been wanting to read ever since I was young and just, you know, figured this would be a good opportunity. And, uh, yeah, I enjoyed this. Um, I also read two graphic novels. These are like oversized books. We got Night of the Living Dead. Um, kind of a, a reimagining of George Romero's classic. These were French, uh, that of course translated into English here. Um, with pretty good artwork. I thought that the story itself was okay. It was very, very much like The Walking Dead, although maybe not quite as interesting or engaging. But I did like the uh, I did like the artwork, and they're very very quick reads. Um, so, you know, I, I wouldn't highly recommend them, but unless it's something that you absolutely need to read. I also read Heaven and Hell: A History of the Afterlife by Bart Ehrman. Um, this looks at the uh, evolving concepts of heaven and hell, and how we got to the point where. We have the, you know, modern um, popular belief of an eternal blissful heaven and an eternal hell of torment and how those were not really the original concepts. And Ermin goes through how those, uh, those images, sorry, those concepts developed and also maybe why they developed and some of the influence that helped to create them. And he goes back to the Epic of Gilgamesh all the way through um, early Christianity in the first few centuries. Uh, for, of the uh, AD or, or CE, last couple centuries of the Roman Empire. Um, and yeah, I, I actually, I found this quite fascinating. Uh, a lot of fun apocryphal stories in here. Um, really interesting commentary and, and analysis. Uh, I said in my formal discussion of this, as formal as I get, that I thought that the ending sort of can get a little bit bogged down in some of the apocryphal stories. Um, but they were interesting, but it, I could feel the length of the book at that point, but things do get back on track pretty well. Um, so if this is a topic that people find, uh, interesting, I would certainly recommend picking this up as I usually, I would usually recommend Bart Ehrman. Um, he is, um, a, an excellent scholar on the history of religion, but he is very much open about his own, uh, loss of faith. So he is somebody that um, people who are of a more skeptical nature and non-religious do tend to uh, like quite a bit. Um, so uh, just be aware of that if this is a topic that you are interested in. He is certainly not trying to push that view necessarily, but he is not shying away from that view either if that's where the scholarship is leading. So just reader beware, be aware of that. But I, I really like his stuff. And lastly, I read Sweeney Todd, The String of Pearls by James Malkin Reimer. We're pretty sure that's who that who wrote this. It was originally a Penny Dreadful, um, published, I believe, weekly from 1846 to 1847, and then put in novel form. Now, because it was a weekly serial if, uh, originally, it does get a little bit weird at times. Some plot lines don't really go anywhere. There are some weird digressions. But there are probably, you know, historical reasons for that. Um, maybe Reimer could not make his deadline that week and they had to replace it. Those sorts of things happening. Um, now, Sweeney Todd, uh, he's, he's a fun character. Um, he's completely despicable. There's nothing redeeming or sympathetic about him. Unlike, you know, I think we can evoke some sympathy for him in the musical version of things, but none of that is present here. This is really about uh, Sweeney Todd bumping people off, and it's 
if you've seen the musical, you already know the twist, but um, if you haven't, it is kept as a twist exactly what is happening to Sweetie Todd's victims. So I won't say it here just in case <clears throat> somebody wanted to pick this up going totally blind. Um, but it's a fun tale of, of murder, and there's actually humor in here that I wasn't expecting. But those are the books that I read in, uh, in May of 2023. Um, once again, all these books I've spoken of more in depth in previous videos. This is just a summary video of the things that I went through during the month. Uh, so that is Night of the Living Dead, Reimaginings, French graphic novels. Uh, we've got The Devil Wins, about lying <laughs> through history. We've got Heaven and Hell, a uh, history of the afterlife. The Witch of Blackbird Pond, and Sweeney Todd, The String of Pearls, which was the original title. If you've read any of these, as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you, BookTube.